I was thinking about the design of carbon policy, and 80% of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States come from the energy sector, from the production and consumption of energy. So I'm actually particularly interested in the regulated utilities. So if you think of electricity, you think of natural gas, a big part of the energy in the United States comes from regulated utilities. So how utilities price energy is important for thinking about how, how carbon policy would work. So we looked at natural gas prices over the last 20 years, and found, and found that the marginal price people face of natural gas is about 40% higher than the cost of natural gas. So what's that? That 40% is the cost that is, is what the utilities are using to pay for the infrastructure, for, to pay for the distribution grid. We've looked at 20 years of data in the natural gas market, and what you find is overwhelmingly gas utilities price based on average cost. So the entire price of all the gas, buying the gas and distributing it, goes on to the per unit price that you pay. In other words, if you consume zero gas, typically in the US, you pay, you pay zero. There's very little month, monthly fixed fee. What this means is that this is implicitly a big markup above marginal, above marginal cost. And this is important if we start to think about carbon policy, because the idea of a, of a, ca of a cap and trade program or the idea of a carbon tax is that you're increasing the price, price of energy. You're leading people to in internalize those external costs, internalizing the fact that they're emitting carbon when they use energy. You're putting a price on carbon emissions. But if people are already facing a big markup above marginal cost, if you were to add this on top of it, add some kind of a carbon tax on top of it or cap and trade program, you could actually move people to consume even less natural gas. We want to think of how to reform pricing in natural gas to pave the way for carbon, for carbon policy to work. And so the, so the obvious thing to do, is also the simplest thing, is to, would be to decrease the price that people pay on the margin for gas. Decrease it until it's equal to marginal cost. That's what efficiency requires. Now, that's going to that's leave the utility saying, we're not going to have enough money to pay for this distribution grid, to pay for, for billing, to pay for all our overhead. So that, you've gotta, that's got to come from somewhere, and we would have that come out of monthly fixed fees or connect, connection fees. This is sometimes called levelizing the price structure. So everyone would pay the cost that it, that it takes to, to provide the distribution grid running, run into your house, and then you'd pay the price on the margin for every unit of, unit of gas you could consume. And in the next several years, we're going to have some kind of federal carbon policy. And uh, since 80% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the United States come from the consumption and production of energy, how that interacts with the energy sector is important. Energy is, is central to everything we do. You know, we use it in our homes, we use it in our businesses. Uh, it's just critical that energy be, be priced appropriately. And, and in this case, this means, we, economists have thought a lot about how pricing should look and you should price it marginal cost. That really then makes it, that lays the foundation for having carb, carbon policy work the way it's supposed to work. Well, the next step, we really, we, I really want to think about the distributional consequences of pricing reform like this. So thinking about ways of designing policies, price structures, or programs that are combined with price structures like LIHEAP or, like, or programs that allow low-income households to, for example, pay less in monthly fixed fees for natural gas. Try to, so that you try to address the efficiency that I'm interested, but also mitigate the possible negative distributional consequences. Mm -hmm.